Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll be doing Lab 7-4 Comprehensive Case for Dillard's Store Data, creating KPIs in Excel Part 2. So in order to do this, we will go ahead and um, open up another Excel sheet. And in this lab, we will compare, oh, sorry, compare total sales across all Dillard's Store over, uh, sorry, all Dillard's Store year to year, month to month, and day over day in developing it as a KPI. So I'll go ahead and open my Excel sheet now. Okay, so I'm gonna go to data, get data from database, from SQL Server specifically. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this moment to put in my server information, database information, and I'll write my SQL statement. I'll be right back once I get this done. I will go ahead and press oh, okay. Go ahead and and once I can see my information being previewed, I'm going to go ahead and select edit. Okay, once my information is here, I'm going to go ahead and select the year column. Once I have that selected, I'm going to go to transform and I will and I will pivot my information and I'm actually going to do instead of month I'm going to change this to amount. This will transform my data. All right and now I will press home close and load and allow my my data to load. Okay so I'm going to select one value inside of my table and then I'm going to go ahead and insert a pivot table. My query one is selected, and I'm going to make sure to check this box that adds data to the to the data model. And my pivot table is created. I like to rename my worksheets just so that I know um, where I can find information. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these. This is query one. Okay. So once the pivot table has been created, um, we're going to create a KPI using Excel's Power Pivot capabilities. And it's just a way to do conditional formatting. And um, actually, we're going to go ahead and add in that, that um, add in. So if we don't already have it. Looks like we might not. So it's OK. We're just going to do it. File, options, add ins. We're going to change to com add ins go. Power pivot is there. Okay. And then I'm going to cancel that. And let me just make sure that KPI is in there. Oh, it should be in here. Yep, KPI. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my new KPI by going to measures, new measure. And it should be, I'm gonna go ahead and change this measure name to 2014 sales. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in my formula. And I'm gonna type in a sum. I like to do sum in all caps. Sum of, and then in brackets, 2014. Always do your closing parentheses. And once again, um, we'll leave it with the default category of general. And then click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat this step two more times to do it for year 2015 and 2016. So uh, 2015, oops, that's 16. 2015 sales, which is sum tab 2015, closing parentheses, general, okay. And we're going to do one more for 2016. So 2016 sales. Um, 2016, closing parentheses, once again, we're in general, and I'll click OK. Okay, 
so now we're going to go ahead and create the KPIs to compare all three years, that is 2014, 16, and 15. So in order to do that, we're going to go to KPI, new KPI, and I'm going to do Okay, so we're going to start off by comparing 2016 to the previous years. So I've gone ahead and changed 2016, and I'm going to go ahead and change my sliders to be 102 and 98, so that we have one above, two above, and two below. Our measure is going to be um, 2015 for the target value measure. And now I will select OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the 2015 sales. So KPI, new KPI, 2015 sales. Um, and I'm going to compare this to 2014 sales. I'm going to move my slider up to 102 and move this one to 98 and select OK. So now we should be able to see our KPIs in this pivot table. So I'm going to expand my pivot table to show now we have 2016, 2015 sales. Okay, so the value of 2016 sales will show the actual sales total associated, associated with the year 2016, while the 2015 ones will, right here, will show um, the measure, oh, sorry, will be measured against the 2016 sales. Um, the goal is for the sales to be at least 2% higher than the previous year's sales. So um, the status will show a spotlight, sorry, stoplight icons indicating red, yellow, or green circles based on the thresholds that we've selected. That is, um, you want it to be 2%. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my, months here to the row section. And I'm going to go ahead and unselect and select my status. For some reason, it um, doesn't show that if you don't select it previously. So um, if, if your stoplights aren't showing up, just go ahead and unselect and select the status so that you can see it. Okay, in order to provide some drill down capabilities, we're going to go ahead and add the day field to the rows section, like such. I'm actually going to go ahead and take out the 2016 sales and the 2015 sales so that we just have stoplights to compare the information. Okay, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and collapse my data so that I can see it all together. Um, there's a few to go, but I just wanted to show you that you can uncollapse and collapse your data. But other than that, this is the end of lab 7-4 comprehensive case Dillard store data creating KPIs in Excel part two. Thanks for watching.